Good evening, guys. How are you? I hope you've had a nice week. And if you haven't, don't worry, it is nearly the weekend. And welcome to our review, recap, chat, whatever you want to call it, of Married at First Sight UK. So tonight is Thursday night. It's episode 28, and it's the end of another week of Maths UK. Tonight, we saw the first episode of Homestay Week. We didn't get all the couples, so it will continue on Monday and possibly into Tuesday. But we got a few of the couples tonight and it was a bit of a slower episode. There's a few points that are worth talking about. So I will try and knock them out as briefly as I can. But just as a quick explanation, I'm sure everyone who's listening to this will already know, but Homestay Week basically sees our couples bringing their partner back to their hometown, introducing them to some family and friends, giving them a bit of a taste of what their life is like outside of the experiment. And it gives them a chance to try it on for size, I suppose, like get an idea of what life might look like outside of the experiment if they did decide to progress and, you know, move closer together, which I'm sure never happens with any of these couples. But it is a very insightful um, task and it is worth doing. So let's start with Ella and JJ because Ella brings JJ home to this house that she shares with her nan. Her nan is so sweet. She's there in her fleecy, you know, blanket and her fleecy dressing gown and she's a firecracker like Ella didn't lick that off a stone it obviously came from her nan they're explaining to Ella's nan you know the whole situation of how they came to be a couple and the nan is just so chill she's like well I don't even remember the other guy's name anyway so that suits me down to the ground and she's saying that she thinks JJ is very you know attractive and then he goes off maybe to the kitchen or I don't know somewhere and Ella has a moment alone with her nan and she's kind of asking her what do you think And the nan just jumps straight to the sex and kind of says, well, you know, once you're having sex with someone, you know straight away. And Ella confides, you know, well, we haven't had sex yet. And the nan is kind of like, "Mm, well, you know, you want to get on that because, you know, it's very important. So I like that. It kind of reminded me of my nan. She's a saucy minx too. And then they go to JJ's hometown. They kind of, they don't see any of his family, but they go to his apartment. It's super Essexy, like it's glittery surfaces and all white and bling and mirrors and yeah it's exactly what I pictured JJ's apartment to look like (laughs) and they go out to meet a friend of his for drinks his friend is really sweet straight away he's like you're not Bianca and then they of course have to repeat themselves and give him the overview of how they came to be and Ella gets a little bit of reassurance from this friend because she says sometimes I can't read him and I might think that he's mad at me but he's just being quiet and the friend kind of says I've known him years. That's what he's like. Don't worry. If he tells you he's okay, he actually is. He's just a chill dude. So Ella kind of takes a little bit of reassurance from that. But she excuses herself to go to the bathroom. And this gives JJ an opportunity to say to his friend, so what do you think? You know, do you like her? And the friend asks, you know, well, do you see yourself going beyond the show basically with her? Like, what's the story? And JJ says that there's been a couple of occasions where they've gone out for drinks and Ella has gotten really drunk and said and done things that he didn't like and has caused arguments. We haven't seen anything, like we haven't heard anything about this. I would like very much to get a little bit more background on what that is all about and why the hell are we not seeing this on the show because... I want to know what she said when she was drunk. (laughs) I'm nosy like that. I want to know what exactly went down. So personally, I think that they should throw privacy to the wind and give the people what they want. Tonight, we also see Tom and Roz do their homestay. So they go to Thomas's house first. He brings her up to his, you know, childhood bedroom and... She's just, she's such a minx. She's on the bed. She's testing out the springs. She's already thinking out loud and figuring out, can I give your mom some extra antihistamine so that she'll fall asleep and we can maybe get a bit of uninterrupted sexy time. And it just cracks me up. So yeah, and of course she's going through his drawers the minute he leaves the room. Like we would all do that. Let's be honest. (laughs) Thomas's mom is super cute. Uh, I think her name's Morag. I might've gotten that wrong, but I'm nearly sure it's Morag. And she just seems super invested in them. She really likes Roz. But of course, she starts immediately being like, you know, I want grandchildren. So you can already see Roz starting to break out in hives. And we do get a clip from next week of her having a total meltdown. So I really hope, you know, a flyaway comment from Thomas's mom hasn't spooked her that much. 
but his mom just seems like the sweetest woman on earth she seems like a real like mammy mammy and we didn't get to see Roz's homestay but I suppose that's going to be on Monday night's episode so we'll just park Tom and Roz there for now moving on we have Peggy and George oh dear so do you know what They get to George's apartment and Peggy is like pleasantly surprised. She seems to be really happy with the way his apartment smells, looks, how clean it is. And like, I don't know what she was expecting, but she's happy anyway. And she even goes as far as to say to George that she could nearly picture herself living there. I couldn't believe that she said that and George just seems so happy and over the moon that she did say it. So look, so far, so good. Of course, his desk is there with his whole setup for his content creation. And, you know, she's like, oh, this is the desk. And he even jokingly, you know, makes a comment to her going, do you want to do some squats? And she laughs. I was shocked. She actually laughed at this stupid joke. So cut forward to the next morning. He's bringing her a cuppa in bed and, you know, they're all cuddles and smiles. And apparently they did stuff. They didn't have full sex. Shocker. But they did stuff. So like god knows what that is <laughs> like i i don't even think it's probably going to be the good stuff i'd say he probably got a little bit of titty action and a couple of strokes and that's all but he seems to be super happy and they're on the right path however this does not last long because peggy just cannot help herself <laughs> so she starts kind of picking again like sometimes i feel like watching george trying to navigate a series of questions from peggy is like watching a blind man walking through a forest covered in bear traps and you're just waiting for her to get him to say the wrong thing so she can latch on to it but she starts asking him you know about his content creation and she's saying oh it looks like a really official setup it's not what I expected and it doesn't look as bad as I thought so he says well yeah I'm very big on structure I do my streams I think like three days a week like Monday Tuesday Wednesday or something like that and she's like okay and how long do you do on these streams And he kind of says well generally I do about two or three hours and then she is like okay okay and you can see she's trying to figure out where she's going to go next so she's asking him you know well what if my sister wanted to go out with you and me and she wanted to go out on one of those nights that you stream on and he's kind of like well if it was one of the nights that is my set night that I stream on I probably wouldn't be able to go so here she is she has her in she knows she has them and she asks him well what are your priorities And George stupidly is like, well, let's see, I I like to go to the gym and obviously there's work and I do my streaming and then, you know, you and you're nearly waiting for this trap door to open up underneath him and this, you know, better look next time, George, fail. And she's taken this, you know, as she's not a priority at all. You know, she's at the bottom of the barrel, which is not really what he was saying. He was basically just listing all the different aspects of his life. And I actually think it's healthy to have a partner who has their own interests and hobbies and does shit of their own. They're not going to be hanging out of you all the time wondering, why aren't you home? Why can't you hang out with me? So yeah, it just felt a little bit like she was looking to pick a fight with him. She tells him that if gaming is his priority, she can't be in his life. And that she's happy that she didn't sleep with him the night before because she would have regretted it. And I'm just kind of like, oh my God, this woman, (laughs) like she's exhausting. And I will bet you any money that if you ever get into her pants properly, which I don't think you will, she will not be good in bed. She does not strike me as someone who would be very good in the boudoir. I feel like it would be missionary in the dark when she's ovulating and it would be timed. So look, George, get out of there, save yourself. And I'm very sad to say that this wasn't the worst homestay that we saw in this episode. Erica and Jordan was just like a car crash from start to finish. So they're obviously still not on the best terms after their blow up at the dinner party. They go to Erica's house first. It's just irritable between them from the get-go and they go out to meet her friends. (laughs) The friends make the mistake of asking them, you know, so how are things going with you guys? First question, first question out of the gate. They've barely sipped their drink and they get the whole spiel and the rehashing of the argument about missing out on partner swap week and Erica having FOMO and feeling like she's not being heard by Jordan. And yeah, like she says her piece But then when he tries to speak, she doesn't let him get a sentence out. She just interrupts him and shouts over him that he's not listening to her. And it kind of feels like unless Jordan just says, sorry, 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 
no words matter. So like they're not getting anywhere. So yeah, very tense. The next day they meet the grandparents, so Erica's grandparents, who seem really, really cool. The nan kind of tells them to, you know, chill out. If you're going through a bad patch, just take a step back, reevaluate, hang on, see how you get on, you know, don't don't quit, basically. Then they go over to Jordan's homestay and they meet his mom and of course his little dog. I don't know what dress his mother was wearing. I don't mean to be disrespectful to someone's mother. She is a beautiful woman. She is far from old. What the fuck are you wearing? Burn that dress immediately. But yeah, it it basically turns out to be same shit, different living room and different family members. So the mom is sitting there like a therapist in an armchair and the two of them are just relitigating, rehashing all of the shit again. It's just white noise. I'm I'm bored of it. I'm sick of it. I'm not as invested in them as a couple to care. So moving on. The final couple that we get to see a homestay with this week is Laura and Arthur. And oh my, do you know what? I wanted to stand up and slow clap Arthur in this one because he is visiting Laura's hometown. So he's in Chelsea with her. And he's going out to meet her two friends. We've met these two girls before. They were at the wedding. They came in the, you know, the in-laws week. And I did think that after they left on in-laws week, as tough a time as they gave him, they were kind of saying to the camera after that, you know, that they seem like they're getting on well and they approve, which I remember at the time thinking that's weird because they didn't act that way. But I digress. So they're sitting down at dinner and, you know, they're asking Arthur, so what? where do you see this going or something really innocuous and general? And I think he gets like two or three sentences out and they just pounce like they're taking turns, grilling him and trying to hold his feet to the fire. And no answer he's giving seems to be satisfactory. Like they're asking what happens when the experiment ends. He's saying, well, you know, I, I think he said his parents have a house uh, nearby he's going to stay there for a few weeks and figure it out and see how it goes but no this is not sufficient for them they feel that he's unsure about his intentions they don't think that he's very clear on how he feels and I'm kind of like calm down because Laura doesn't seem to be very clear and confident on their future either like they're figuring it out I don't think that that's a bad answer I don't think it's a wrong answer And Laura kind of chimes in and says to Arthur, you know, maybe watch how you speak to my friends or, you know, your delivery could be softer or something to that effect. And I'm kind of thinking, are you not seeing how your two hyena friends are like coming at him? What the hell? Like, what is this? And he stands up to them. And I love that he stands up to them. And he just says, like, I feel very attacked. I feel that you're judgmental, that you're just coming at me. And that he's not here to impress them. Laura is the one that he cares about and wants to impress. And they're like throwing their heads back and laughing at the notion that he doesn't feel that he needs to impress them. And they're asking him again, you know, do our opinions not matter to you? And he says, no, they don't. And they are disgusted. They are disgusted that this guy does not know his place and doesn't seem to value their opinions. And they have no problem speaking very bluntly to Laura about him saying that he's a dickhead, he's not serious, he's not speaking to them correctly, nobody should be speaking to her like that, the one on the left that has the mouth that looks like a baboon's arsehole. Like she's hugely offended by the fact that Arthur has had the audacity to kind of push back on them and say, you know, slow your roll there girls. And Laura kind of just sat there through the whole thing and she didn't say a word to defend Arthur. And I'm just thinking like the amount of shit that everyone else was throwing at Laura and Arthur was nearly jumping in front of the bullets for her and he was defending her every step of the way. Like he, on our last episode, we saw him like preemptively take the blame for all the stuff people were slinging at Laura. She did not say one word to stick up for him. She just sat there looking like a shrinking violet, letting these two entitled bitches tear strips, like taking turns talking down to Arthur. After all of the support he's given her through this experiment, I just kind of thought, I hope this is a wake up call for him because you are who you hang out with. And those two women sitting across the table are vile. And there is every chance in the world that if they're her nearest and dearest, that they're all cut from the same cloth. So I think Arthur should just get out while he can. But yeah, I just felt really icky after seeing that scene. And 
that was really the majority of the episode. I don't think anything else of note really happened. We are going to see the conclusion of the homestays on Monday and we get a little bit of a clip of uh, Tasha and Paul. So yeah, Tasha is coming out of her shell. <laughs> let's, like, let's just say that. She's like snapping at Paul and Paul's friends are like, dude, get out of there. So yeah, somehow I feel like this series will end with absolutely zero relationships intact but let's let's start placing bets now who do you think will be walking next I have my theory I'm gonna say Laura and Arthur I don't know if that's wishful thinking but I just feel like Laura and Arthur will be next to throw in the towel but anyway that's it for this evening that's all the Maths UK reviews for this week I hope you all have a lovely weekend I will be back here tomorrow to talk about House of Villains and the Real Housewives of Sydney and possibly Below Deck at some point over the weekend if I get a chance but if I don't talk to you until next Monday have a great weekend and sweet dreams <laughs>